Can you all hear me? Cool. What? I was told to wait till 35 after by the guy. What? So who here is, this is their first scale. Any first scale, ten, you like it? Love it. The swag alone is worth the admission. <laughs> Anybody else? You like, it's all good, you like it? You gonna go next year? Are you gonna go next year? What? Are you gonna go next year? Probably. I heard a rumor it may not be here. We're getting too big. Yeah. Oh, that's where those Comic Con people go. <laughs> they used to go. Oh, that's true. So I'm going to start if the guy doesn't show up. But. I know. I'm listening to the man. Should I go? I'm going to go. I was supposed to read something, though, he said. I'm going to go. Hey, everybody, what's up? <laughs> Welcome to my talk. Thank you for going to scale. This is good. This is you're the dedicated group that goes to who's been here the whole four days? This is a dedicated group, I just Okay. I'll ask that. Who's been here for all thirteen scales? Oh, okay. Figured you'd want to ask that. I, I don't have a prize for you, but that's pretty awesome. I have no way to verify that, so I just I'm trusting you. Do you really? That's awesome. Uh, this one. All right. So what I'm going to talk today is uh, I'm going to go over uh, what is real-time processing. I'm going to talk about what the Raspberry Pi is for those that don't know. And then I'm going to combine the two, so like, okay, now we know about real-time processing, and now we know about the Raspberry Pi. Can they actually, can the Raspberry Pi do real-time processing? And why the heck would you want to? And then I'm going to talk about an example project that we could, uh, that could be incorporated, real-time could be incorporated in the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll open up for questions. So what is real-time processing? And it's the application that requires a guaranteed response within strict timing constraints. The key word of that sentence is guaranteed. As we'll go later, it's not running fast. <laughs> so here's some examples of real-time processing. Uh, on the upper right, you have the F22. There's, I'm kind of familiar with the real-time processing on that one. There's lots of real-time processing. Uh, there's Asimo, it's built by Honda. I'm not sure why Honda is building robots, but he built the robot, robot. And the motor controls, the especially that particular robot walks. And if anybody has done robotics and try to mimic uh, bipedal walking movement, it's very complex. Oh, uh, okay. Well, then they need to drive cars. That makes sense. Uh, car. That's, that's a picture of my car. No, it's not. Uh, there's tons of real-time processing nowadays. It's just amazing how much computing power is a student normal. I mean, obviously, that's a VAT, the C7, but even the budget-minded car nowadays has tons of real-time processing in it. And that picture, it's a little bit dark. That's uh, actually a nuclear reactor. So you could imagine there's lots of real-time timing constraints and things you must do with a nuclear reactor to prevent bad things from happening. So I think sometimes people get confused because they say, oh, real-time processing. And there's two types. There's hard real-time processing and there's soft real-time processing. So hard real-time processing is basically if you do not meet your timing constraints, something bad really happens. With soft real-time, eh, system will be degraded, 
but yeah. So here's an example of uh, hard real time. If you're doing the guide, it's called the GNC, the guidance, navigation, and control of a rocket. I mean, obviously, a rocket during during launch, there's all this very high dynamic things going on, and uh, you have to respond within milliseconds, if not sooner. Because if you don't, that happens. And that one is a picture of the inaugural flight of the Ariane 5 rocket. A uh, very short maiden flight of the Ariane 5 rocket. They actually did self-destruct it. There was lots of things that went wrong with the software. One of them is they said, oh, we have the Ariane 4 software, which just port it to the Ariane 5. And uh, even though this is 16-bit and the other one's 32-bit and 64-bit, we could just do the conversions and uh, lots of bad things happen, and because of it. Now here's here's the most controversial picture of scale. Yes, I have a picture of an evil iPod. That's very evil because it's anti-free. But it's the perfect example I can think of to demonstrate soft real-time requirements, especially the click wheel. So if you're writing, you know, the evil Apple developer in Cupertino. He's writing the software to control the click wheel. You know, if you don't if the if the software is running too slow and it's not getting the interrupts and it's not get it's it's having latency issues, the the user will get mad. But you know the the iPod will still work. You know, you may go like, oh I wanted that song. No, not that song. The other song. No, the one before it. And they'll get frustrated and they'll throw it against the wall. But the the software will still work fine. So that's an example of soft real time. So what is real time not? And this is my personal pet peeve. It is not software that runs really, really fast. I have an example. Let's say I have a thread that has to execute a certain amount of processing every 2.5 milliseconds. It's 2.5 milliseconds fast. That's pretty fast, right? But let's say you have a system that only supports five milliseconds. It ain't gonna work. And I was a little side story. I was interviewing a person for my job. I work for a defense contractor person. And uh, I was interviewing her. And if you have an interview with me, uh, the projects I work on are very, very strict, hard, real-time kind of things, which I can't talk about. And I asked her, what is your uh, experience with real-time application development? And she said, tons. I'm kind of looking through the resume. I was like, well, it's not obvious. Where have you done real-time processing? Maybe you've done stuff at home or something. She goes, oh, no, I write software really, really fast. <laughs> and I'm kind of like, oh, okay, I was kind of curious. I was like, well, define fast. She goes, oh, it's seconds. I'm like, seconds is not fast. So eventually, with some other questions, it was sort of, we'll call you, don't call us. But no, it is not, there is a bigger misconception. It is not software runs really fast. Again, when we talked about the definition, it is software that, you know, it's basically you are guaranteed to meet your timing requirements. Real time could actually be quite slow, but it has to be guaranteed, you have to be guaranteed that your software is going to run within those timing requirements. And the other one, it is just because something's embedded, it is not real time. Uh, so real quick, when we talk about metrics, we have an interrupt latency. So the time that the software responds to an interrupt, pardon me, that's called an interrupt latency. So let's say you have something that's driving an interrupt, an external clock that does like a five millisecond pulse and your software can't respond to that, the latency is 25 milliseconds before it sees the first pulse, that's, that's, that's no good. And also scheduling latency, that's a whole talk in itself. But essentially real-time applications have a real-time scheduler. And as I was talking about earlier, let's say you have, a, you have a task that has to run every two and a half milliseconds, 
the hardware and the OS has to wake up that task, have it do its processing, and then re and then release it. And that's called schedule latency. So what's the Raspberry Pi? I was actually I was at the scale, or we have a. I belong to the SVG lugs, SVG hack. Uh, I think I recognize a couple of you, and we had a bunch of Raspberry Pis out, and I was amazed that some people actually never seen one before. So who doesn't know about a Raspberry Pi? It's okay, you can raise your hand. So Raspberry Pi is a really cool device. It was originally intended for education. It is a very cheap computer. So it's an ARM-based, it's an older ARM. It is single core because they wanted a lower cost. Although I think the new one is the is a quad core and it's the ARM seven, right? Yeah. So they've improved it. Yeah. But uh, so that's cool they improved it. But the, the standard stock one that's that's been out forever. It's a um, it's running at 700 megahertz, single core Atom. Uh, you could have up to 512 megabytes of memory. The, there's ones that have 256, and it's all for around 25 bucks. So essentially, for 25 dollars, you have a standalone, nice little computer. And it, it, even though it was originally intended for educational purposes because it was cheap, they want to put cheap computers in the classroom. It's because it's so flexible. A ton of people are using projects on it. So what is good about the Raspberry Pi? Well, like I said, it's cheap. It is easily hackable. We like that. It comes with GPIO pins for input output of devices. And it supports 1080p. And that's actually very one of the things that's very popular with Raspberry Pi is run XBMC on it. Is anybody running XBMC on their Pi? Yeah. And uh, it's just amazing for it plays my, I have one at home and it plays my high def, uh, legally obtained <laughs> high definition. <laughs> yeah, well, just in case, this is being streamed, I don't know who's watching. Uh, here's some examples of some Raspberry Pi projects. There's a bunch of them, you Google them, there's a billions of them out there, but the one on the far left is a uh, internet radio. Uh, device to do streaming of internet radio. Uh, the one in the middle, he was actually using it for uh, time lapse photography, and he even has it on uh, motor control, so he could actually move the camera as doing time lapse. And the other one that's very popular with the Pi is that uh, you can run this thing called MAME. Everybody, who doesn't know MAME? For those that don't know MAME, it's basically an emulator where you could uh, emulate your old video games, again, that you for the ROMs that you have legally obtained. <laughs> yeah, and so this one here, that's actually a cool device. I am jealous of the one on the far right. They built this nice uh, cabinet case and with a uh, LCD display, and so they basically made a tabletop. Uh, uh, actually, it's uh, Donkey Kong. So with MAME, if you, you just load the ROMs you have. Uh, so what's so bad about it? This thing's so cool. What's so bad about it? Well, it doesn't have a real-time clock. Because again, they wanted the lower cost. So if you just had a Raspberry Pi and you powered it on and you weren't connected to the, to the intertubes, uh, it wouldn't know what time it is. Uh, the, and we'll get into a sense, the, it, it, Depends, there's different distributions out there, but all the kernels that come with it are not Linux real-time kernels. So that guarantee stuff that I was talking about earlier, it can't guarantee it. Uh, the RAM can't be expanded, uh, at least not easily, as far as I know. So it's you know the RAM is built onto the, to the, to the computer itself. So it's not like it can go fries and throw it in some dim memory. Uh, the built-in the bus, the bus that controls everything is really kind of slow, and it turns out the network interface control card that's built in is actually a, kind of an internal uh, USB controller or USB NIC. 
So basically, the, your network controller and anything you have connected to all the USBs that you have share the same bus. Depending on what you have connected to it, this could get kind of slow. And it, the, especially the early ones had a bunch of power issues. I think there, if I remember right, there was a little bit of a hardware feature. Uh, was it a bug? It was a feature, I guess. Where you ha you have to supply a good power, and if you don't, then you start having like reboot issues, or you'll plug in, uh, especially the early ones, you'd plug in your USB keyboard because you want to use your new Raspberry Pi, and the keyboard wouldn't work. So, I think that's been mostly resolved, but. Uh, you basically, if you're going to get Raspberry Pi, get yourself a really good power supply for it. So the question is, the reason for this talk, can the Raspberry Pi, this little device, do real-time processing and why the heck would you want to? Well, it can with a lot of tweaking. Uh, as we mentioned, the, the kernel does, it's, it doesn't usually come stock with a real-time kernel. Again, this is not a surprise. This is not a knock. It's supposed to be a general purpose computer. It's not supposed to be dedicated. Uh, the, when you come with a distro, it comes with a bunch of stuff because they want you to do a bunch of stuff. So they want you to do like web processing and web hosting and, and doing sound and doing all this other cool stuff. But if you're going to do a dedicated project, all that stuff gets in the way because it all, all that stuff fills your, your CPU time. And I think I said, I talked about it, it doesn't have a real time clock. But because it's cheap and because it's flexible and because this is, you're talking about education, to teach kids how to build like robotics and do their own things something that's unfortunately very lacking nowadays, that would be an awesome thing. And it, it's also sort of the hacker mentality. And I talk about the old-fashioned hacker where you get something that it normally wouldn't do and you change it so it can. I'm not talking about the hackers that steal your credit cards and sell it for bitcoins. So, okay, so let's say we all have Raspberry Pis and we all want to do some real-timey kind of stuff and we're going to do a project. How are we going to do it? So for our example, or my example, we're going to make a Nerf, Nerf uh, a tank with a Nerf cannon. So this thing has to be kind of complex, right? First it has to detect the baddie. Then it has to move the turret to, to the point to the baddie. Then it has to know, hey, I'm pointing to my turret is in the right spot and if the tar and if the baddie's moving I gotta lead the target. So it has to calculate the position of where the target needs to be. And he says send the signal saying yes, fire now. And it has to do all that stuff and not hit anything while it's doing it. Now we could be kind of lazy. We could say it could only fire when it's not moving, but that's boring. That's kind of lame. So let's say we're gonna, this thing's gonna fire on the fly. It's gonna go wherever direction it's going and it's gonna point its turret while it's moving and it's gonna kill the baddie and fire the, the super deadly nerf dart. So as we're gonna get into this, this is kinda like, there, this is kinda multi-threaded, right? There's lots of different tasks going on. So let's we'll first talk about the real-time clock because that's the easiest thing to solve. So you could buy, there's tons of them out there, there's Adafruit sells one, uh, there's others, get on eBay. You could buy a real-time clock and connect it to the GPIO pins. What's that going to give you? Not only do you know the time, but now you have some accuracy in your processing. Yeah. Well, hold that thought. <laughs> so now we have a clock. So it's like, well, that's cool. But, you know, we need some, we need a certain driver we're going to get into. Because the, the uh, Raspberry Pi doesn't do good ner pulse generation. So let's just say, you know, we have a couple motors on our tank. We have the drive motor. We have the motor that's controlling the turret. And even if you have a stepper motor, you have a really good stepper motor, they require very accurate pulses. 
right? So it's going to, and it, the the reason why this is important is, let's say we want to move the uh, turret a certain direction. We want to move it from here to here. Well, we got to tell the motor, okay, you're here. You need to go this far, this amount of time. And if the pulses aren't exactly right, you're going to get some slop. And what's going to happen? We're going to miss the baddie, and the baddie is going to kill us. Uh, another thing is, let's say we have, uh, on the other end of the tank, we have a sensor that's going to detect uh, walls in front of us. So let's say we detect an object, we go, okay, it's three feet away, we're going to motor go this far, but no further, and then stop, because we don't want to hit the object. Well, again, that's all a command to the, to the motor, and if you're off, then uh, you're either going to be too short or probably too long. Now, I've actually seen some Raspberry Pi, I was doing some uh, Google searches for this talk, where people were using Raspberry Pi for kind of that sort of thing, and what they did, they ran into this issue. And so what they did, they just made, they just made their, uh, like this one guy had like this dune buggy kind of thing, he just made it stronger. <laughs> He's like, look, I know I'm going to hit things, so I'm, you know, I'm just going to make it really, really strong so when I hit it, it doesn't break. But there's a more elegant solution to that. And then there's a couple of things that you could do. So Adafruit uh, sells actually a servo hat that plugs on top of the uh, Raspberry Pi, and that will do all the processing for you. Uh, I did mention Adafruit a couple of times. This is not a commercial. I don't work for them. I buy a lot of stuff from them. So if you're watching Adafruit, you know, a little karma coming my way would be good. Uh, the second thing you can do is the AD 989850 pulse generator. This guy actually is a, has a very accurate clock and it'll generate pulses. That's sort of what you're talking about. And I'll talk about that in a sec. Here's some pictures. This is actually the uh, Adafruit. Again, not the bias Adafruit. You know, if you can find one out there, but that's, that is available for you. And it's, you can see it's controlling like four motors in that example. And the one on the right, that's the 80, 8950. So for the, se for the second one, the 80, 9850, what I did was uh, I bought one really cheap on eBay. I think it was like three bucks. I could have got it cheaper if I bought it in bulk. Um, so you connect it to the GPO pins. And then what I did is I wrote an ISR in their service routine to basically trigger on that GPIO. And it was very, very accurate. I took a, I actually hooked up to an oscilloscope to look at the pulses coming out and looking at, and then I had some debug software to see how the, the Raspberry Pi was responding to it. And remember I was talking about that inner latency earlier? It was very, very low. So that was good. So problem number three. So we, we have a real-time clock, which is good. We, we have our pulses. We generate nice, steady stream pulses to our motor controls. This is good. The third problem is, remember I was talking about all that stuff we got to do? Well, that's, you're going to require some multi-different processing threads kind of running at the same time. Now, some people may think, oh, I'm just going to write one big, long-ass program that's going to do everything all at once and serially, but that never works. So what we need to do is we need to create different threads. So what we need is we need a scheduler. We need the operating system to launch our threads. We need our threads to do their processing and go away because a lot of those threads are going to be accessing shared resources. And what we don't want is thread number one, let's say accessing something on the USB bus and not releasing it, and here comes thread number two, it needs to grab something on the bus, that's whatever it is, and it can't because it's having a resource collision. So basically we need something to uh, process our threads and clean them up. And as I said, the uh, default distributions don't, uh, don't cut it. There's, there are solutions, though, hence this talk. 
there's a thing called RTMS, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, you can build your own real-time real kernel, but who the heck does that anymore? Who does make menu config? You do? Yeah. You are hardcore, sir, and so are you. <laughs> when was the last time you did make menu config? Friday. You, sir, I have respect for you. I've gotten lazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, hey, look, and, and besides, you know, before you judge me, I actually started on Slackware 4.3, and I needed a SCSI driver, and I actually had to desolder something on a SCSI car to actually get it to work, but I've gotten lazy. <laughs> um, so, you, but, you, but you could, if you, him, you know, if you want, you could build your real-time kernel. Or if you don't want to do that, you could say, well, you can remove a bunch of stuff that we're not going to use. And maybe you might get away with it. Um, remember I was talking, oh, so priority version. Priority inversion is essentially something that has a lower priority task blocking a high priority task. So let's say the F20, I think it's, I don't want to do that one. Uh, so let's say you have, you have a very high priority task that has to do something super quick, and you have something that's super slow. So usually it's like processing is your more high priority task, and your user displays are lower priority tasks. So, and so let's say a user task is blocking your, your, your very high priority task from processing uh, your flight controls. That would be bad. <laughs> a fun example of priority inversion is this guy. This is a the Mars Pathfinder. It was several missions ago. It wasn't the Curiosity. It wasn't the rover. It wasn't the Spirit Curiosity. It was one before that. Um, it landed safely, and everybody was happy at JPL. And then all of a sudden, the next day, they couldn't talk to it anymore. And it was basically because of a classic priority inversion. Luckily, they were able to fix the software and they were able to recover the mission, and it was very, very successful. But you really have to be careful about priority inversion. Uh, I mentioned RTMS. This, this is actually really cool. It is a free, open source, free as in beer, free as in freedom, real-time operating system. Pardon me. The only equivalent I can think of is there's uh, a commercial one called uh, Wind River VX Works, and I've used both. I've used I use a lot of VX Works. I've run a little bit of RTMS, and it is very equivalent. It's a very powerful uh, real-time operating system that's been ported to Raspberry Pi. To be honest, not all the stuff works with it. You say you may have some networking thing issues and all that stuff, but all the core stuff works with it. And it's used, NASA uses it, it's used for medical, uh, it's, uh, there's a wide variety of uses. And you can download it, you can just start, start, you can just go in your Google and search RTMS and Raspberry Pi and you can port it over. And you will have an honest to God, preemptive real-time operating system, which is cool, and it's free. Free as in beer, free as in freedom. And we all love that. Um, so one of the things we could do is, uh, if we if you don't want to go to the RTMS route or can't because you need to use the functionality that's not working with it, and you don't want to build your real-time kernel, well, what you what can you do? Well, you could overclock the CPU, and the uh, the CPU is easily overclocked. There's something called Raspbi config every, that you get when you get a Raspberry Pi to configure your hardware, and you can do some overclocking. Uh, it's a little bit of a fuzzy magic kind of a thing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, RTMS, as far as I know, does not support overclocking yet. So that's something that, uh, that's something I was, I've been wanting to work on, but my real life has been affecting that, but uh, that, that's why I didn't list it, but uh, uh, you do that. Also, remove anything you're not using. So, for instance, in, my, in our tank example, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. We're not going to use FTP, probably, so get rid of it. 
You're going to have all bunch of network demons, and if you're not going to have your tank connected to the network, get rid of all of those demons because what are they doing? They're ta they're stealing clock resources away from you. Uh, I can think of a couple others. Uh, what you could do is just take a look at the services. Anything that's not there, get rid of. It's not ideal, but you might get away with it, especially if you have the other modifications that we've made. So in summary, we've talked about what real time means. Hopefully you guys have a better uh, understanding of that. It's, like I said, it's sort of my pet peeve when I see stuff on the net and I have interviews and people don't understand what real time is. Uh, just because I just deal with it every day. It's just, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, we talked about things you could do with the Raspberry Pi. We talked about the pros and cons. It is actually a very cool device. I highly encourage you to get one and start hacking on it. Because the more people that are hacking on it, the better the community grows. And it's, we talked about my Nerf take example. Actually, hopefully for next scale, it will be at the SVG log, SVG hack booth that we're going to have. And you can say, Steve, where's that Nerf tank that you were talking about last year? I'm like, here it is. And with that, actually, I'm a little bit early, but does anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. The, yeah, <laughs> that is a separate talk. There, basically, anything that's anything you're not using, disable. kill it, just disable it. Well, actually, no. So there are uh, guys. It's been a while since I did this. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of flags that you need to have exactly for the preemption. Yeah, there. There are. Um, if you, I think, I, I had something a couple years ago where I had, I had to do this. I was actually doing an audio application, so I needed a real-time kernel. And I Googled how to do it, and it was uh, quite involved. But because everything, you, you have to set certain things a certain way. That is true. Right. Because remember, if you're going to do a real-time kernel, you're going, the, the reason why, I mean, the reason why the stock kernel doesn't support this is the, the stock kernel does general purpose computing. If you're going to build a real-time kernel, you're going to build it because you have, you know, something that is going to be dedicated to do something or other. So a lot of stuff's going to break. But you don't care about that because you disabled it anyway. You've thrown it out of the kernel because you don't need to use it. Uh, actually, I'll get the uh, yes. Okay, you. Yes, the orange shirt thing. I have not personally. Anybody? Not seeing any hands. So, sir, yes. Yes. Interesting because it's it, it must be at the kernel well, the kernel oh, layer. Then, the kernel layer. I mean, 
mean, it's ever low. I mean, it's taking the interrupt before the kernel will get it. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was wondering how could it be faster than the kernel, but and uh, it interrupts the kernel at any time. So, we, but, it, but the thing is, is like the, you're not changing the, the drivers in the kernel to be preemptible. Mm -hmm. You can't mess with any of the operating system state within there. That's what I was kind of worrying about. Yeah. So, so that's another communication mechanism that's possible. What's running with that? Then on my XDN O M A I. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've just never played with it. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's the core of it because it has the preemptive, and then it has, uh, like I said, a lot of the services that are not uh, included. Anything else? Well, oh, what? One more. Yes. So, not above this talk, but in general terms, both RTMS and the, the evil VxWorks uh, one that costs, I mean, to show you the difference, RTMS is, is freedom beer, freedom freedom. If you go to Wind River and say, I want an RTX license, they'll say, absolutely great. Here, give me $10,000. And that, that, that's no, that does not include support, by the way. So, you know, the other beautiful thing about RTMS is you have the available the source code. So let's say you find a feature in, R in VxWorks for your application. You say, hey, Wind River, I, found a, I think I found a bug in your code. They say, great, give us $50,000 for, for support. So both VxWorks and RTMS, you could actually assign cores to your tasks. Now, it gets kind of tricky because it, it's not a linear relationship. You think if you have four cores and you get four process running at the same time, that's good. But remember, those four, co those each individual cores have shared resources. So eventually, you have diminishing returns, especially with the new stuff, which has like eight and cores and stuff. Yes. There's, uh, I think it's just a bug. It hasn't been properly ported. I do know that it supports USB, so I think it's just more of there's some bug that they need to work out. But again, because it's an open source project, it's eventually going to get solved. So if I did this talk next year, I wouldn't be talking about that because they would. It's a very active uh, community, by the way. Yes, sir. So, uh, Right. We've used for everything out of your Linux system for the Raspberry Pi. What is left of Linux do you really care about and not just throw out the OS and go with a light controller or some other system where you've just you've written all the real time portions yourself? Right. So somebody in my group, uh, in my, my lug named Dave, he would absolutely agree with you. He's like, because he's, he's a pick guy. I mean, he's like a really big guy. Um, the thing about that is, yes, the, what you get, what is left is basically the real-time scheduling kernel for your applications. Yes, you could go microcontroller route. That's my personal preference, actually, to go that way. But because Raspberry Pi is an educational device that, you know, yeah, it'd be good for teach kids that, pick controllers and that kind of a thing. But if you could, especially with uh, limited resources with schools, if you could give them Raspberry Pi and just do some software tweaks and you could actually run a quad core or a quadcopter, that's, that's it. But yeah, I mean, yes. Uh-uh. As far as I know, no. Um, yeah, I mean, to be, to be honest, a lot of those people would rather probably just do Arduino or maybe a BeagleBoard Black. Uh, but 
So again, this, the, the goal of my talk is sort of do like a hacker thing, you know, get something that's not normally a good fit and see if you can make it a good fit just because it's fun. Yes? Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically all the module stuff, all the, the device driver stuff that you don't have, just Is get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that's what, I mean, again, it, it sort of depends on your project, because yes, you may say, I have a real-time kernel, but I also have a camera. So I'm going to need to take those device drivers for that. Yes? Oh, yeah. So it depends on your mic. It depends on your stepper motor, but uh, you have to look at your data spec. But uh, all those, like I said, are, are pulse driven, and they have requ your motor would have requirements on that. So what you need to do is look at your your stepper motor, and then. You could do that if you want to bypass Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So what is the thing that you're trying to request the answer? Oh, it depends on usually your stepper motor. Some of them have microcontrollers on them, so they like do a serial link. So you could you just basically send. It depends on the motor. You could send it so many pulses that go these many steps. You could send it. Some of them, like I said, have some logic to them. You could actually give it like a five and figure it out. Oh. So I think that is it. Thank you for attending my talk. Thank you for coming to scale. I hope I see you all next year. Yes. you work in some equipment you cannot share what it is. Well, one of them was the F-22. Yeah, okay. Do you know anybody working on SCADA? Okay. Yes. Scale when it... SCADA. Oh, do I know somebody personally? No. But I, I've heard of people that work in... Yeah. Uh, I just don't know anybody off the top of my hand. But uh, again, do the, the Google search and probably find... There's only one open which is kind of dead. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a shame, actually. Can you mention quickly, actually, um, yes. the slides? Are you going to have them somewhere? I don't even know if Scale puts them. I've never oh, yes, yes. So uh, this slide, Scale has my slides, and they should be available, if not now, really, really, really soon. So just keep checking the Scale website? Yes. Is that how? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I've never cared, except I like yours. I'm oh, thank you. Oh, I, I'm honored. <laughs> You really build your own kernels. That is awesome. Yeah, I run Gen two. So oh, you have to. I don't like Gen kernels. <laughs> have you ever used the Raspberry Pi in your project to make sure you don't want to talk about it? Oh no 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 no. Uh, usually my stuff is yeah. uh, you know rad hardened. Uh, but I mean the thing of it is is. Do you guys ever use like the RTMS or do you guys mostly use the XOR? Uh, we mostly use VxWorks. We do have uh, what's called uh, side projects that use RTMS. Uh, normally because, um, well, that and it's a classic open source thing. It's like, who are you going to sue kind of a thing. Yeah. So if you have this multi-billion dollar space thing and it crashes, you don't want to go. You don't want to go to the general and say, "Well, we picked the free one." You know, you'd go like, "Oh, it's those guys. It's Wind River, and they're a publicly traded company." Yeah, um, a couple of little bits of feedback to you yes. down in the same room. Stan, the guy with the scale that goes around in the car, did a um, real-time processing on some other little microcontroller, and he did a whole lecture, and at the end he said, well, you have to put an FPGA board on it to do real-time processing. Um, um, a recommendation for you in terms of that manner, kind of, it went a little bit in that manner. Uh, add bunches of your slides on the RTOS and the real-time embedded stuff, and because that's where it really fits into the Linux. 
and what, what you're talking about, all that type of stuff. For two, on the Mars rover, you've got the exact example of priority inter interrupts not working. But the problem was that um, it's stepper motors. You go bang, 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 you miss one step, it grinds to a halt. Uh, VX works did not have prior interrupt priority in it back in 92, 93 really? when that was done. And they had the, their solution on it was uh, the ra they had the radio working. It worked on on the ground, but they didn't test it with the radio. Oh, uh, and the radio was affecting? Yeah. So what they did was, uh, and they had the interrupt, bam, 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 going out to the stepper motors. And the radio interrupted and ground to a halt. The solution was we're only put one step out at a time. Oh, uh, really? Well. Yes. Yes, but that is the But it wasn't, they miss, missed up their priority interrupt. It stayed in town. Oh, funny. It's interesting. Uh, but excellent talk. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of struggling. It's like, because I, mean, I could go really in the weeds in this. But then I want people to gloss over, like, wow, yeah, what the... Add in, like, four, five slides on real-time Linux, Linux this round. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I thought, have you ever heard of a real-time operating system called RTAI? RTAI. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll look at it. I'm yeah, really curious. more of a higher level uh, scientific... Oh, like academic research kind of thing? Yeah. I'll take a look at it. Um, would, when, is it necessary for an original operating system? Is it part of the definition that a user process can free up the kernel? Or is that always, is that not necessary? Well, is it the most common way? Yeah, that's, you have to be very careful with that, though. Yeah. Because, I mean, depend, you don't, again, you don't want to have priority inversion. I mean, you don't want somebody, you know, if a user is going to push a button to put some command, you know, there's probably other things that need to happen. Oh, so uh, so I got a Raspberry Pi, installed RKMS on it, on my workbench. Yeah, okay. And then I connected the AD8950 to it. Okay. And then I just hooked up a oscilloscope and looked at the pulses. Yeah. But what's the minimum time frame that you got from the... Oh, I can't remember. It was... Uh, it was, yeah... It was, yeah... Because the real-time requirement is based on your system. I think I was seeing like 900 nanoseconds. Is that from well, processing the, the signal yeah. to it, to the pin, and then seeing it, basically seeing the output out going out. So, so it's just 900 Yeah. I think that was right. I should have had a screenshot, actually. Can you on the Raspberry Pi? This is my question. What's the time frame between the two real-time events happening? What's the well, it, it, so it depends on your, depends on your system, right? Okay. So let's say you're doing a tank. Yeah. Your tank is going to have different timing requirements than an airplane. I understand, but both are yours. That's the question. My personal ones? Am I work? Oh, I was just messing around. So I was just doing a measurement. I was actually not building anything. I was just basically saying, could I do it? You know, could I hook a real-time clock? Could I could do these things? Um, so I wasn't actually building something. Like, you know, if I was... Uh, some people... Have, my leg want to do like a quad core. So obviously, you know, you have stabilization and you got to, you definitely want to, you, you're very concerned at your motor speed because you don't want to have an imbalance because of it. So it just depends on your system. But I was, I was just messing. Okay. Yeah, I'm interested in Yeah. Why I'm here because we use our in the, I work for Slack. Oh. Sure. And they use Artemis basically on the controls. They have AMD based CPUs, right? Uh -huh. so they use Artemis. They like it? Okay. <laughs> it works. It works, sure. That, 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 that's actually a good phrase, actually. It works. And uh, it's just the requirement, basically. I think it's, for now it's 120 hertz. They basically do. Okay. I mean, you know what they're running it on? Ah, cool. Do you know what they're running it on? Like some what CPU they're running it on? Uh, yeah, still though. 
Sure, like with SBC kind of a thing. Uh, oh, okay. Cool.